Hello, welcome to episode 118 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today's the 29th of May. So welcome everybody, I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. Um, so today I have some knitting. I have some sewing which includes some dressmaking and a little bit of embroidery. I have a few confessions rather a lot of confessions though I'm afraid <laughs> but I'll leave that to the end nearly um, and then I'll have the ask me anything um, section where I've got a few questions from the ask me anything thread in the Ravelry group and then I'm just going to talk about my shop update a little bit at the end of the podcast so you can find me on Instagram Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic and you can find my website crafthousemagic.co.uk um, where I sell my hand dyed yarns, handmade project bags, stitch markers, higher higher knitting needles and accessories and also fabrics and you can find the links for all those in the down bar as well as the show notes as well. Um, I have a couple of make-alongs going on at the moment so I'm doing a collaboration with the lovely Becky from the Back to Blighty podcast um, for the What A Lot Of Potter Cal and we're knitting anything from the Harry Potter Knitting Magic book um, and it's due to end on the 1st of June so don't forget to get your entries over in the Finished Objects thread over in Becky's Ravelry group and I've got the discussion thread in mine so there's still a little bit of time to come and join in. Um, I still have got quite a lot to do on mine so I'm going to have a mad rush over the weekend to try and finish that <laughs> um, but I hopefully get that finished by next week so there's that uh, make along but we also have the spring shawl along and that's going to run right till the end of June so you, so you still have plenty of time to join in um, and not last week the week before I did some videos on all my shawls just to give you some ideas of what patterns um, that you can knit um, and what yarn combinations to use um, so that might help I'll leave links to those in the down bar as well but basically it's any shawl or to be honest any scarf that's knitted or crocheted um, come and chatter along of what you're making there's no proper finished objects thread put your finished objects in the discussion thread and I will draw from for prizes from the discussion thread so that even if you don't finish you're in with a chance to have a prize um, so that's that let's get into the good stuff let's start with the knitting first as always I have a finished object so I have been knitting the what's it called the everyday slouchy beanie by Tristan from Dragon Horde yarn and I finished ta -da! but I haven't blocked it yet I was just um I thought I finished it and then I thought well, I should have really blocked it before the podcast because you get a nicer drape when you block things um but it was a bit late then so I had to show you it unblocked <laughs> <laughs> I haven't put my pom-pom on yet but I'm thinking about putting a pom-pom on there as well um, but this is knitted in two yarns held double so it's my merino nylon base in the colorway holding out for a hero held double um, with a new base that I'm trying out which is basically alpaca and silk lace weight and it gives a lovely halo when it's held double with the merino nylon as well well you don't have to hold, hold it double of course but for this hat I have um, so this is the um, alpaca and silk and how fluffy it is on its own and I used 40 grams of a 50 gram um, skein on this of the lace and 70 grams of my merino nylon base and they were both dyed in the same colourway so that it sort of blends in nicely let's see if I can focus in a little bit better for you so that's how it looks close up and you can just about see a little halo there I don't think you can really see how soft and fluffy it is unless you really see it in real life I don't think that's picking it up and doing it justice but it is so cozy so it's obviously a very slouchy beanie and the rim is double so you've got a nice thick layer um, that's going to go around your head and I'm going to attempt to put it on even though I've got clips in my hair <laughs> so you can all laugh at me so there we are it's like a, a slouchy one turn around so you can see the back um, I'm not really sure if I really suit hats but um, as hats go I think this isn't too bad for me if not Ad will probably steal it <laughs> so that's that one um, I will block it and um, show you the difference when it's blocked next week 
I'm going to get a balloon, I think, um, and blow it up a bit just to have the shape rather than blocking it, rather than blocking it flat so that it won't have a crease. Um, and just normally soak it in some um, wool wash as I normally do and put it on the balloon to dry. So I shall show you what happens to it when it's finished or when it's blocked. So that's my first um, knitting project that's actually finished. And I've got a few works in progress to show you. So last time I showed you I'd done quite a bit of my jigsaw puzzle. This is a Stephen West pattern. And it's quite a big, big shawl. <laughs> so this is how I've got on with it so far. I'll just about see that pointy bottom bit. Um, this is knitted with four ply yarn, but it is held double. And the pattern suggests that you use um, two different yarns and mile them, but actually I decided in the end just to go for at least the ones, the triangles I've done and shapes I've done so far, I've decided just to keep the one colour on their own because I think the blocks of colour is working quite well with this. So since last week I've done this section, which happens to be in the same colourway as my hat. <laughs> So that's holding out for a hero, but that's obviously knitted with two strands of the merino nylon rather than mild with the, um, not mild, but rather than being mixed with the alpaca. And then I've done a tiny bit of this section, and this is the common Eileen colourway. I won't go through all the other colourways that I've used um, in this shawl. Um, I will do when I've finished it, and I'll go through them all again. Um, but there's eight different colourways, so it'll take me half of the episode to go through them. <laughs> <laughs> so on the other side of the shawl um, you can see that where you pick up stitches from different sections you sometimes get this bit where you've got like a, a nice spine of stitches which I think is quite a nice effect. I'll show you the back of the shawl a little bit better um, but there we go it looks pretty neat the way um, Stephen gets you to pick up those stitches although I have got some ends that I need to weave in. <laughs> so that's the jigsaw puzzle by Stephen West and those are all um, my merino nylon base colourways and I will list all the colourways I use in the show notes if, that, if you're interested. Um, so that's my jigsaw puzzle and I've been picking up some old projects, well one. <laughs> So this is my Llewenid shawl and it's an Isolde Teague pattern and I picked this up, this pattern and this yarn from the Edinburgh Yarn Festival last year. Um, here is the, let's get the um, the pattern, what it's supposed to look like. So it's the Llewenid shawl and there is a picture inside that shows it all nice and flat so you can see what the full shape is. So I've done about that much here. So what happened is that last year I cast it on, knitted all the way past all this cable work and realised I'd made some mistakes. I'd missed out some of the decreases so it was a weird shape. So I ripped it back um, to about there and I've knitted all this bit again. I'll show you it on the shawl actually. So. It does look slightly wiggly where I've undone it, I think. So I'd, I'd knitted probably to about there, but then I ripped it back to here, I think. No, maybe there. So I've knitted that bit again. So it's got some really nice cable stitches there. Hopefully that you can see that. But it is a really nice yarn as well. It's got sort of tones of darker teal and lighter teal um, or grey in there. Um, and hopefully I'm sort of not going to make any more mistakes on this shawl, hopefully. <laughs> so the yarn I'm using is a Sol J pencil garn yarn. And I did actually buy three of these skeins. Um, but I don't think I'm going to need any more than two. So um, I'll have to work out what I'm going to do with the other one. So it is a gorgeous colour though. I think that suits me really nicely, this colour. So I've caked up two of the skeins and I've only used that much of the first one. So I've got quite a bit of yarn to go, but I'm not quite sure that I'll use that much of the second skein anyway. So I might be able to have sort of um, one skein and a half for another project. We shall see how that goes. So I'm using the same needles as the pattern suggested. Um, and I think the original yarn that the pattern was designed for was um, Garth Noor, but I'd picked out this because it was a gorgeous colour. 
Um, so that's on the go nicely again, instead of being chucked in the naughty corner because I got fed up with it. <laughs> so I've also got another shawl on the needles. And this one, I started off myself and then Liz has been knitting some of it because she got a bit, um, I showed her the pattern and she got a bit stuck with it to start with. So weirdly, there's a bit of a provisional cast on here in the centre of the square. So I'd sort of done this bit and then I passed it on to Liz to help me knit um, all this long bit. <laughs> so I did a little bit in the middle. She finished off the square and then you pick up stitches from there and knit um, like a chevron shape all the way along here so Liz actually got to the part um, of the pattern where I told her to stop so actually the edges of these shawl of this scarf is supposed to be sort of straight but I decided I want to keep it so that it's like a V shape on the ends so on the schematic diagram um, there was supposed to be some um, bits to fill in um, the chevron edge to make it square but I'm going to ignore that <laughs> and do some modifications so I think I'm going to make this a little bit longer because it's only coming out um, to about a meter um, across there so it's not really quite long enough um, but I do like the effect of the chevrons getting bigger as it goes along so I think I'm going to sort of um, keep going doing the same um, sort of increase in the size of the chevrons until I get to the point where I think I've got enough yarn to sort of cast off. There's 50 grams of this yarn left so this is a heavy lace weight yarn and I do have the tag here somewhere here we go it's Deimos so the, the yarn Deimos is made of um a heavy lace weight made of Corridale and Zwarbles, 80% Corridale and 20% Zwarbles and it's 150 grams of this in the ball but I've measured it and there's 50 grams left um, so I should be able to make it a little bit longer and also then um, work out a way that I can sort of finish off this edge so that it doesn't curl up so much. I'm sure I can just put some garter ridges around the edge there. Um, these stitches are actually just on waste yarn um, because in the original, like I was saying, they, the pattern basically got you to pick these stitches up and do some square sections to square that off. But I really like the pointy edge. And they, I do have to get rid of this provisional cast on and close it up. It does look a little bit rude. <laughs> oh dear. So there we go. That's how um, basically Liz has knitted most of this for me. Thank you, Liz. Um, and I'm going to carry on and finish it off in the sort of way that I fancy rather than following the pattern completely. Because it's a bit silly buying a pattern when you want to modify it so much, but never mind. <laughs> So that's all my knitting I've got to show you. But I do have some sewing. So Barbara, would you like to come over and show us what you've got on? Thank you, Barbara. So Barbara is wearing my Concord t-shirt and it's a pattern by Cashmereette. So this is a pattern that I've made a few times before. Um, when I've used the high neck, I've tended to use the long sleeve version, but for this fabric, I decided I wanted to use the high neck to make the most of the print so you can see it better. Um, initially, I bought this fabric thinking I could make a cowl neck top with it, um, but then I thought actually I'd be able to see the print a little bit better if it was just a higher neck that wasn't sort of all ruched up. Um, so it's actually got snakes and beetles and butterflies on it, so it's a very unusual fabric. And it's called Cobra Corsage and it's by a company called Lady McElroy. I will leave links, because um, I think they still have it on several websites, um, to this print if you're looking for to buy some. This is the jersey from Lady McElroy. It's a viscose jersey that's really nice and drapey and it's got sort of a crepe texture to it which is quite nice. Um, so I didn't really make any modifications to the Concord pattern. I kept the high neck as it is and I just chose the short sleeve version without the cuff. Actually I have got a Concord t-shirt on now so um, one of the pattern options is that you can have a little band on it but I decided to do it without the band. So I decided to omit the cuff just to make it slightly uh, less casual so that I could sort of dress it up with a cardi and a necklace. So that's it really, it's just a standard sort of t-shirt shape, but just a, at least it isn't a fanky, it's not the same top again. 
I shall lean it forward so you can see the pattern a little bit better. But there are some creepy, creepy snakes on it. Um, it is difficult to know which direction to, to cut this fabric because you've got lots of things going different directions. So this butterfly is going upwards, but the one at the top there is going down. So when I was cutting the fabric, I tried to fussy cut it so that I had um, these couple of snakes on the front panel and the beetles coming up there, but I didn't realise that there was so many upside down butterflies on the front. But um, I'm sure nobody's going to be saying, got your butterfly upside down there because <laughs> some things are the right way they're sort of just crawling all over the place but there we are <laughs> thank you Barbara so Barbara is now wearing my next t-shirt I've been making so this is the Romy top um, by Tilly and the Buttons and there is an option to do a tie back at the back as well but I just thought I'd only got a meter of this fabric so there was no way I was going to get that detail out of the small piece that I had um, but I wanted to have a go at this different neckline so it's got some pieces that sort of fold over each other on the neck which I thought was really cool and I thought this fabric is so cheerful and lovely I'm going to have to make it up into something so um I did, this is the first time I've made a Romy top by Tilly and the Buttons and I want, I'm not really sure whether it seems a little bit big on the shoulders with this crossover bit but the rest of the t-shirt seems quite loose fitting compared to some of my other t-shirts that I've got um, which is quite nice, um, quite a nice summery um, fabric that I've picked and this is an art gallery fabrics um, in a stripy print and I think that they still sell it I think I picked this from Minerva Crafts um, but I certainly think that they still have some in there because it's relatively new um, fabric that I've purchased um, I did I just picked the standard sizes that I normally I think with Tilly and the buttons I normally go for a six on the shoulders and then I go out um, to a seven halfway through the armhole and then I grade out to the nine I think on the bust area and on the hips um, just to give me a little bit of extra space <laughs> um, I think actually I could have done with going very slightly smaller across the shoulders because of the way it lies on me but I shall have a play with it um, and tell you how I feel about the fit a little bit more next week once I've actually worn it properly because I always say this but you can't really tell uh, that you're happy with the fit well I can't anyway until I wear it for a few hours to really get a good impression and I haven't worn this yet so I shall see how I get on with it. So I shall show you the back. So on the other... Oh, you're getting squeaky, Barbara. <laughs> so on the other option, there is a panel at the back where there's two ties that tie up there. And then there's like a bit of a, a gap where you can see your skin, um, which I think ends up still quite high. I don't think it would show your bra, um, which is a nice detail. But like I said, I didn't have much fabric, so I went for just the standard um, version in this one. So I decided to pop it on so that you could see it um, and that's what it looks like. You can see that it's a little bit baggier um, than the sort of the Agnes top. I suppose it's a similar fit to the Frankie really. Um, I wasn't quite sure whether this seemed a little bit sort of big around the neck. I'm not sure if I'm just being a little bit fussy with it because I've made it difficult to really show but it's an interesting um, alternative to a sort of standard neckline but that was quite fun to make and I do like a bit of cheery turquoise <laughs> so there we are another t-shirt for the wardrobe um, I might have bought some more fabric which I shall show you in my confession section but first I have one more embroidery thing to show you so thank you very much Barbara so I have finally found a frame that I'm reasonably happy with um, to display my embroidery from the stitchery. So it was a kit from lovely Nikki Franklin who runs the stitchery um, and I stitched um, the little motif with the kit and I just put my initials and I've actually added the date to the bottom 2020 so I know what year I completed it. And this frame is from Amazon um, and I used uh, Technique 
that you're supposed to use for um, embroideries and things where you lay your piece of embroidery over the, the backing card um, and then use threads to draw it in to make sure it's nice and tight around the card um, and then put it in the frame so it's nice and flat on display. Uh, I think I'm reasonably pleased with how it come along. I think I probably overdid those um, French knots a bit and I'm certainly better at doing French knots than I um, I was before I started this. I've done so many now. <laughs> so this frame is one where you can hook it on the wall or you can have it on the surface as well and I shall leave a link um, to where I got it from Amazon um, in the show notes as well if you want to, if you want to find out. I think initially I wanted the one to be slightly wider really um, like it, there was a picture of an example on the actual pattern that came through and it did have a wider frame but I couldn't seem to get hold of one that was a six inch um, frame that had a wider frame around the outside but I'm really happy with it um, like it is. I um, I didn't want to put some of those, um, the card frames in it and use a larger frame, I just wanted it to be quite small. Um, so I found something as close as I possibly could to what I was looking for, so I think that's okay. Um, I'll just give you another look at the frame. So it's been worn on purpose to make it look a little bit rustic, which I think goes nicely with the piece of stitchery. So there we go. So I have my confession section. I've been very naughty. I may have purchased six fabrics. <laughs> so, I have always quite liked sea salt clothes, which is like a make in the UK at least. I don't know. It, I think it's from Cornwall actually, the company. Um, and they always have such lovely fabrics. And the other day, I discovered that they sell fabric. And I was like, ah! Oh! Well, these are all from sea socks. <laughs> so this first one is a gorgeous blue floral and this is a modal um, jersey fabric so it's quite a nice lightweight um, and it should be quite cool to wear actually so that's rather lovely. I think this one out of all of them is more um, expensive than the others um, because of the modal content but I believe it's supposed to be quite a durable fabric so and I think I bought a meter so all of these should be tops in the end um, but that's the first one. A second one is this gorgeous teal fabric. I absolutely love these prints um, and this is actually a viscose a bit bamboo viscose version um, and it's a little bit drapier than that first one and I'd say a little bit more stretchy as well. Um, but again that's going to be a top, love it. I'm just going to be ending up throwing all the fabrics on the table here. <laughs> I will pick the one that's the same content as well. So this is a bamboo um, viscose one and again it's teal. <laughs> I love it, I love this colour, gorgeous. So that's another one. I have actually washed these fabrics as well um, so they they seem to be all right with wash as well and uh, to be honest I know that sea salt clothes do tend to be really um, nice fabric so hopefully these will be just as nice. This next one is a nice mustard flower on a teal background <laughs> because you can't have enough teal can you or turquoise. Um, this actual the base of this fabric um, is a cotton jersey um, so it's not quite as drapey as the other one. Um, this fa this type of material I have had um, from sea salt before in top obviously made already and I do find that this type of cotton jersey lasts ages so hopefully the other ones will as well. So that's that one. I have another cotton jersey. <laughs> And it was also buy one, get one half price. So I had to have six to make the most of the offer, of course. Um, this one's got some nice flowers. And again, it's a cotton jersey. So it's a similar drape to the last one. Not quite as drapey as the viscose ones, but still absolutely gorgeous. And then finally, last but not least, this isn't a jersey fabric like all the others. Um, this is a cotton and linen mix. Um, but look at that, isn't that gorgeous? 
So I thought I'd make sort of a short sleeve um, top of this one. But now I'm thinking maybe I need to have a whole dress in this because it's so gorgeous. And um, this is a cotton linen mix. So I think that it wouldn't crease quite as badly as just linen. And I think that would be quite durable as well. So mm, maybe I should get some more. <laughs> Oh dear, yes, and now I've made a complete mess with all these fabrics on my desk. But there we go, hopefully, because they're washed already, ready to go, I might have some time at the weekend to do something with them. Who knows, we'll see, we shall see. Um, so there we are, that's my confessions. So I have two sections left of the podcast next. I have the Ask Me Anything section, and then I have some information about my shop update at the end. So I have a few questions from the Ask Me Anything thread. The first of which is from Linda, and she was asking me, um, what are a good selection of threads and what thread supplier do I use the most? So, um, any sort of good, um, like Guterman or Aurifil or Wonderfill I quite like. I do tend to go for um, threads that I'm gonna use a lot, like this one. <laughs> This is this not the very cheap thread, but it's in a massive roll because I use so much. And I always pick like a white, cream, a grey, and a black um, because I use these colours the most. Um, and it's it's a polyester core with cotton over it, and it's from Empress Mills. Um, and I do like to use those for the stand, standard colours, and then I tend to go for the posher stuff with the um for the different colors really um but they, this does seem to go with my machine really well i wouldn't buy very cheap threads really i don't think that the machine um copes with them very well at least mine doesn't i think you just need to try different makes and see what works with your machine because for some reason i don't understand why certain machines don't like certain makes of thread goodness knows why but you just have to go try and to see which works best with your machine. Let's pop that back. So I hope that helps Linda. I'll pop links um, to the thread supplies in the down bar as well um, if you want to look at those. So the second question is from Angela and she was asking me about um, what bind offs to use with shawls because a couple of episodes ago I was talking about my mother-in-law Liz had knitted a shawl and she used a standard bind off it wasn't stretchy enough around the edge of the crescent shaped shawl um, to block it out nicely so Angela was wondering which bind off methods do I tend to use now there's two methods that I tend to use quite often and it's Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off um, which is basically you knit one yarn over from sort of uh, from the back of the work over to the front and then knit one and then you slip those two stitches including the one that was the yarn over over the the last stitch you knitted if that makes sense but I will leave a link um in the down bar um to the videos that I've sort of followed in the past and the second method of cast off is the um simple stretchy bind off that's in a very pink knits video that um I've watched some time ago and I'll leave a link to that and basically what she does is that she sort of knits two and then knits through the back loop of those two stitches and she explains how to do it um, when you're doing it in a rib as well which is quite useful and I'll leave a link to that video down in the um, down bar so I hope that helps Angela I do have several more questions from the ask me anything thread but I will leave um, them till next week I think because two in a week is enough I think um, and I just want to talk about my shop update um last of all so um i'm not having anything new as such in the shop update this week um but i just wanted to say that i'm changing all my packaging over to a more eco-friendly sort of paper and cardboard packaging um i've finally got rid of most of them i do have a few plastic envelopes left um but i think the majority of my um parcels now are all going out um with no tape on and all sort of um paper packaging so that it sort of helps the environment the brown i tend to wrap everything in tissue paper and then brown paper and the brown paper is recycled um and you can recycle it again 
so I think that's always good. There will be some more yarn bases next week. I wanted to have them done for this week, but I haven't had time. Um, but there will be the um, alpaca and silk base on the lace, and, and a few more bases as well I want to introduce. Um, and also I have some more charms that I want to list as well, but those will go in next week's shop update um, at 7pm. Um, I think that's all for today, so thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I shall see you in the next podcast. Bye!